focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Change is the next leg of transformation. It's definitive, relentless, and requires a holistic and human-centric approach. A reimagined approach to transformation has become a fundamental step in orchestrating expansion and development in an organization. Transformation Realized, powered by EVI, is a brand new chapter where we bring to you inspiring stories of business transformation that have put the customer and innovation at the core. The second episode of the series takes us through the rise of one of India's leading cables, wires and consumer durable manufacturing company, from a small trading business to becoming a leading global manufacturer. Businesses of today can stand the test of time only by adapting to change. Leaders are leveraging the emerging trends of savvy consumers, evolving go-to-market channels and the power of technology to achieve scale and long-term growth. Now, This week on the six-part series of Transformation Realized, powered by Ernst & Young, we bring you the story of RR Kabul, India's leading wires and cables company, which has undertaken a wide-scale transformation and created long-term value for its stakeholders. Please welcome Shri Gopal Kabra, the Managing Director and Group President, RR Global, Mitesh Taga, the Managing Director at TPG Capital, and Karan Bhatia, Partner Business Consulting at Ernst & Young. A very warm welcome to all of you, and uh, thank you for taking time out to, for speaking to us today. Uh, Mr. Kabra, let me start by asking you about RR Kabul, because, you know, it was established in 1999 as a manufacturing company, and in the two decades since, you've been able to establish yourself as one of the leading cables and wires company. So, you know, looking back at what the journey has been like, would you recount that for our viewers? See, we started in 1999, and that time was wire and cable, Unorganized sector was 96% and organized only 4%. Mm. So it was a tough challenge because it's a low interest category product and inusable. And as you, we all know that in India, for us, quality and safety is far away in thinking process. So it was tough, but then since we got uh, the latest technology in the world and we were the first company to make a halogen free wire, mm. that's helped. And we made policy that we will be a marketing driven company rather than a sales driven company. So this helped us to grow much more faster and sustainable. Okay, so that is how you grew in the past, but going forward with the ever-evolving changing landscape, how are you constantly keeping up to date and adapting to this change? See, adopting change, uh, because see, our focus was different, hmm. uh, because we had a very long-term vision to run this company. We are not like a night-by-flyer company. So like when we started, we had a goal that first five years we will be making loss, hmm. and on six years we will make profit. Hmm. So for us, profit was a secondary rather than establishing the business. Mm. And we as a company, we made a goal that the who's who in this country, mm. the top five category, like into IT company, like for say, Infosys, Wipro, like in hotels, the Opera, Taj, Marriott, mm. like individuals, uh, like Sachin Tendulkar House or American House. In each category, we decided all the top five customers should be using our cabin. Mm. So that always give a pressure that how should be your policy of sales and marketing. Hmm. So that's the reason that we reached to this level. So growth has now become kind of consistent for the company. So, you know, given that trajectory that you've already seen, what was the need or what were the triggers for you to undertake this large transformation that you did? See, basically as an entrepreneur, hmm. we do most of things as a gut feeling. Hmm. But after reaching a particular level, I think so you require a transformation whereby system, process comes in the picture. Hmm. Otherwise, the team is also homegrown. The entrepreneur is also homegrown and product is also homegrown. So, hmm. after a particular level, I don't think so you can grow without transformation. And with this experience, I can say that every 10 years, each company should take as a transformation is a project. Mitesh, let me put that question to you. You know, TPG acquired a significant minority stake in RR Kabul in 2018, I believe. Uh, what were the key factors that made you believe this is the right choice for you? And, uh, you know, what was the vision that you entered into this partnership with? So as TPG, we were studying the various consumption trends and their growth in India. And one of the trends that caught our attention was the growth in consumer electricals, driven by the electrification drive that the government was driving in India. Mm. Today, uh, on a per capita basis, India consumes less than 100 kilowatt hours of electricity per month. Mm. Compare that to US, that's more than 1000, 10x. Even compare it to small countries like South Africa and Chile, that's between 300 to 400 units. Mm. So there's a long runway for India to come along. And with 
the current government's focus on electrification we now have an electric pole in every village in the country mm. but what that means is people will need to draw wires from that pole to take it into their houses and electrify their fans fridges washing machines TVs etc mm. um so we started looking at the sector and we, um, the added uh, dry uh, tailwind over here was the formalization of the economy from GST and e-way bills right of which course. was like gopal ji said driving the unorganized sector to the organized sector mm. we conducted a market survey and we got very clear feedback that the highest quality perception in the market was of rr kabul mm. uh, rr kabul had the highest nps or the net promoter score against every single competitor in each of their core markets so it was an easy decision so it was an easy decision we reached out to the family uh, to uh help them understand on what tpg can do as a change uh, agent and we have worked internationally with more than 250 companies to help mm. them scale and grow their businesses and a lot of them have been family run businesses mm. so the idea was to come in and uh, while rr could have continued growing very well at, by themselves but we wanted to help them build processes which can help the business grow beyond the family Hmm. and help the business withstand intergenerational transitions and also withstand various economic uh, cycles well uh, you know current let me bring you in as well because when you looked into the rr kabul story back in the day uh, what were some of the key traits that stood out for you and one of the important things that we look at in a transformation journey is the original traits tend to get lost over time how did you make sure that those were retained as you undertook this transformation i mean look when we started the journey of transformation with rr uh, you know we the had a conversation with tpg and with rr we undertook a deep dive diagnostic hmm. there were some things that really stood out about rr one focus on quality that mitesh also spoke about i think it was unrelenting everywhere we went we everyone spoke about how good the quality is the other thing that really stood out was that the loyalty amongst channel partners amongst the employees there have been employees who have been there for the last 20 years grown with the organization has been amazing and it's not because you know money has been thrown at them it's because of the entire way people have been trusted in the organization how they have been given opportunities to take risk hmm. sometimes fail but the ones who have succeeded have actually stuck in the organization we started with that then we went into the transformation and like you rightly said you know transformations do fail hmm. they change the dna of the organization Yeah. now we want to build on that so we said let's preserve the strengths first any transformation has to be human centric in its very nature mm. so you start by saying that how do i ensure that i am identifying the leaders for the future they are the ones who are going to drive the transformation and sustain it mm. the other thing that we said is customize the pace of change to the maturity of the organization rr kabel is actually two separate divisions within the organization there's a well oiled machine cables and wires is a well oiled machine mm. there was also the consumer business the consumer durable business which was like a fledgling startup okay. so all the enthusiasm of a startup behind it and hence thought what we actually came in and developed was very different for both the divisions hmm. in terms of what it actually means to transform and how do you drive the change in the org, right and i think the final point was really how do you go about creating moats against replicability hmm. because that is what sustains transformation right? so if i may what is the moat for rr kabul I think the biggest moat that's been created is how the entire approach down to the market looking at it at a micro market level India is not a few states yeah. or a few cities every few kilometers you find a different it's actually 20000 micro markets mm. right so we went down to 20000 micro markets any organization is not present in more than 40 to 50% first fill in your micro markets then every place in India behaves very very differently mm. as we all know and even within a state they behave mm. very differently yeah. so customize your strategies to individual micro markets mm. ensure that we become partners of change with the actual electricians on ground mm. we bring our quality we also ensure that we improve the quality of their lives all right gentlemen hold your thoughts we have to take a very short break but don't go anywhere we're back in just a moment
back. You're watching Transformation Realized, powered by Ernst & Young. And today we're tracking the story of R.R. Kabul's transformation journey. Mr. Cabra, let me toss it back to you on that note. You know, what according to you have been the key changes and the initiatives that have been implemented in R.R. Kabul? Also keeping in mind uh, your vision and also uh, the core philosophies of transformation in the company. See, investment in terms of the size of the company mm. and the cost is not that big. But in terms of the major investment you need is some time of the top management to the team. And uh, this could have been failed also. But what we did that we got our team and we asked our team to drive this. So generally in any occasion what happens the, uh, the message goes from the top. Hmm. But we created from bottom to top and top to bottom, we all came together. So that's become successful. Otherwise it is most difficult. Otherwise, generally in any organization when the message comes from top, so an inclusive strategy, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, Mitesh, you've sort of had a front row seat to this transformation that we've been speaking about at RR Kabul. Uh, what is your opinion on how the process went about? And what are some of the industry-first approaches that the company adopted? So I think uh, we are now three years into the transformation. It's been a, a great journey. It's still work in progress. It's mm -hmm. not all done. Uh, we have touched upon multiple areas within the organization, right? So changed ERP systems. Uh, HR systems, uh, changed supply chain processes, uh, optimized our warehouses, upgraded the leadership team, uh, done a M&A. So multiple things have happened. Mm. Uh, this has happened because of the combined strength of the incumbent team that we had in RR, plus the new hires that we have made into the senior leadership who are now working together as, as one unit to drive some of this transformation. And it's not been easy because it's like tra changing the tires on a running train, not just a running, but an accelerating train, right? Mm -hmm. And you can only do that if the chassis is, is stable and strong, mm -hmm. which it was. That what RR stands for is very high business ethics and values and integrity, which is well known right to the last electrician and the retailer in the industry. Mm -hmm. So if RR promises something, you will get that, whether it is in the quality of wire or the scheme promotion, promise to the consumer, promise to the stakeholder, they stand by that. Uh, so that's been the key success factor in my view, uh, where everyone has so much trust in the system uh, that they've been willing to take on this change uh, with the vision that Gopalji has and his family has laid out for the business. Uh, in terms of industry first initiatives, there have been plenty of them. RR has always been a pioneer in this industry, like Gopalji mentioned. Uh, they brought the best wire technology to the country. They were the first ones to bring the LSOH, which is a low sulfur oxygen uh, halogen wires uh, in the country, which are the safest wires today. Hmm. If you were to install in the, in your home, which I'm installing in my new house. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, I think a few things that we have done, current touched upon the micro market approach. India hmm. is not one country. It is multiple countries hmm. in itself. We speak some 20,000 dialects in India, right? And hmm. those are the 20,000 micro markets that Karan was referring to. So creating that micro market level approach and having that level of visibility, employing analytics, leveraging data that's available within the system and from outside the system uh, to create a tailored uh, strategy, I think that has been uh, a disruptive one. Okay, uh, you know, Karan, what would you say were some of the steps and strategies you had to undertake to sort of transform the cultural and social fabric of RR Kabul? I think, look, uh, first what we needed to do was change mindsets, hmm. right? We started at a point where, you know, you said sales happen for an organization when I build my first customer, right? Uh, stock has moved out of uh, my go down and sales has happened. Hmm. Some industries have moved to the next level. They basically came in and said, that's not when sales happen. When a retailer gets stock is hmm. when sales have happened. We've actually taken down to one level further. We've said that when an electrician has picked up stocks from the retailer. That is when the sales. Is that is when the sales have used it in a consumer's house. Hmm. At that point is when sales happen. So you need a complete digital enablement behind it hmm. to be able to track it all the way through. To create this at scale, you get out to one and a half lakh electricians, more than one lakh retailers across the divisions hmm. in the organization. And that is what is actually coming out and creating the entire change. Now, when we did this, because like uh, Gopalji mentioned, the top has to be consistent in its message, but you have to celebrate it across the organization. You identify the leaders for tomorrow within the organization okay. itself. And at that point itself, you essentially come in and say that, how am I ensuring that this entire levels within the organization 
through first pilot implementations. When the pilot started growing three to four X of everywhere else in the organization, mm. there was a groundswell of support. People started saying, I want to adopt the change now. Mm. And that's when you know that the change has actually happened. The cultural social fabric is actually evolving in the organization. All right, gentlemen, hold your thoughts. We have to take a very short break, but don't go anywhere. We're back in just a moment. You're watching Transformation Realized, powered by Ernst & Young. And today we're tracking the story of R.R. Kabul's transformation journey. Okay, Mr. Kabra, uh, what according to you were the steps that you undertook to transform R.R. Kabul's sales and cultural fabric? Basically, as you all know, that we acquire luminous HEV division. Hmm. So it's a first acquisition and many more are in the pipeline. And then, you know, of course, B2B is going to a big market share, but still our main focus will be B2C is a bigger focus because we want to expand more into consumer product and then wine category like in 22 years yeah. we become from zero to the fourth largest company in India yeah. and the advantage and also we have got a global footprint is very strong yeah. we, are, we are the only company in the world which got 33 international approval for single factory in India we are the only company for the rich compliance so now we need to create uh, so we are making premium product and then we want to premium more our okay. category so then only otherwise we will become a more sustainable as a company. So our focus is into one is growth and educate the people. So hmm. we are the only company who is giving education to electrician, to consumer, to B2B customer all. Hmm. So our job is to make more and more education because the electrical safety is a big challenge in this country. You know, the kind of high growth momentum you've seen, is hmm. that sustainable going forward? Yeah, sustainable because I tell you, uh, whatever the new things we are, which we are seeing in this country or in our personal life, Everything is supposed to be electrical. Mm. Now this e-mobility is going to create more demand. Mm. And aspiration to buy house in India has gone up. See, our prime is now that housing, house for all, number one. Number two, now this young generation, they have got double income in the family. Mm. Previously, one person used to earn and the six people to survive only one income. And uh, COVID has impacted very well, good for our industries. Mm. People have now understood what is the value of having good house. Mm. Because they spend. So it's a, I, and overall, if you look at the economy, global economy, housing is a very low percentage in this country. Yeah. In all over the world, the uh, developed countries, the housing is the number one economy in the world. Okay. But here we are on the fourth rank. So, so housing will be one of the growth drivers yeah. uh, for your business as well. But specifically on the consumer business, what is your vision there? What kind of growth trajectory are you seeing? See, consumer business, we are looking for more product to be listed. Right now, we are into lighting, fan, and gear. Only three, four ranges. And switch and hmm. switch gear. The switch hmm. we have only. So we are looking for switch gear. We are want to expand in fan. is a big industry. Like see, we are into economy and premium economy now. So then we are looking for a premium range. So category also then BLDC fan is going to the future. So we have our in-house capability to uh, make BLDC motor. So BLDC motor will be again game changer like uh, this from CFL to LED has come. Yeah. So the same story is going to be in the fan industry. Okay. And many more like uh, we are looking for the cooler and many more products. It's a big range. Still, it's a beginning for us. So, it's so like Karan mentioned, so it, start, it was a startup for us. Hmm. So, let's make a startup into a real business. Okay, we hope to see this startup grow into a real business, as you say. But, uh, you know, Mitesh, the last two years have been significant challenges, whether it comes to building materials, uh, you know, durable uh, industries, primarily because of COVID and the kind of commodity price spike that they've seen. Now, given this, how do you think RR Kabul is geared towards the kind of uh, you know, handling these kind of disruptions that come their way. The transformation that the family undertook and all credit to them for the openness to change the fabric of the organization mm. uh, has really helped them uh, navigate this uh, wave that we've had in the last two, three years. So when COVID happened, uh, each of the individual business leaders took on the challenge on themselves to navigate this uh, crisis and find new ways of doing business. So we defined the well-being of our employees and the safety of their, them and their family as a number one priority. Mm. So first three months of COVID was focused on that. Our revenue went down from 300 crores a month to zero in the months of April and May 2020. Right? Mm. And family and we were not worried at all. We know this is, this, this is a phase that will come and pass through. But we did not sit on it. I mean, after taking care of our employees, we set up a war room with Karan and his team. 
monitoring each of these micro markets and the situation on the ground, seeing what's happening to the distributors, what's happening to the shops, what, what's happening to our consumers and acting real time. So we had heat charts, red, yellow, green, amber flashing every day uh, from different parts of the country. There were some greens. So uh, now they're all greens. So right, <laughs> we are now hopefully past this and in a good space. But I think this agility that the organization has now developed and the data and analytic capability that they've de developed has helped them to react very quickly to some of these external shocks, mm -hmm. including the commodity price increase and uh, the shipping. Which continues to play out. Which continues to be out. So um, they have they have come stronger out of this crisis because of the agility they've built. You know, it's something we joke about amongst ourselves. It's never waste a good crisis. I think <laughs> what's actually got developed through this has made the entire transformation much stronger mm. than it the crisis had not really hit us during this. So time. is that the big takeaway, then the last question to you, for the industry to make note of from this transformation that RR Kabul has seen? Yeah, I think there are there are a few lessons. Look, RR Even if Kabul, you get zero revenues, don't be disheartened. Don't be disheartened because yeah. that's the time everyone's making zero revenues. Yeah. If you are on a, the entire, you know, you're either acquiring new customers or you're taking away market share. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity to do both because everyone's been disrupted. And I think, you know, RR Kabul's been a, amazing transformation story. I mean, it's the last two years, industry leading growth pretty much across, and it's just scratching the surface. Like Gopalji said, it will probably just grow strength to strength from here. But if I take out two, three key messages, one, if you go through a transformation, a transformation has to be very human centric, hmm. right? You have to be able to gear your organization and people in the organization to be able to take it on. Second is take bold bets. Transformation is not about incremental transformation. This is about how will you innovate at scale? Hmm. How are you actually going to ensure? And if you don't have capabilities, even acquire capabilities. That's exactly what we've done right now. Hmm. Acquire the capabilities to be able to build that. Hmm. And the third, get in the best capabilities across your functions, route to market, supply chain, tech enablement, analytics, HR, which we have actually been able to build together, create that as a digitally enabled ecosystem, which actually can just take it on from there and go to the next space. All right. Uh, on that note, uh, all of you gentlemen, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Kabra, Mitesh, Karan, for taking time out and speaking to us. That was a peek into RR Kabul's transformation journey. Well, with that, it is time for us to wrap up the show for today. Transformation Realized, powered by EY, is a six-part series where we will bring you inspiring stories of business transformation realized through the power of people, technology, and innovation. So stay tuned to CNBC TV 18 for a lot more.